Sometimes the Chinese cook it a little bit better. Ah. <laughs> hey, hey, I got dibs on the Henny Colada. Talk to a Chino with that, that good at Spanish. Look. esa cadena, la segunda. La que está ahí. Got you up. I got you up, yeah. Dale, pues digo. Digo, rope chain? Digo, rope chain. Sound top tune. Chino Latino, meaning Latin American people with Chinese origins. And as far as America goes, they're heavy in New York City. And their unique cuisine is beloved by all types of people too. For decades, people have served chashu mofongo, chuletas and fried rice, chicharronas de pollo with lo mein. I mean, listen, we're all about bridging cultures here, so we're gonna travel up and down New York City to not only explore the food, but also meet the people and hear the stories. We start off in Brooklyn at a classic, Caridad China, joined by a Chinese guy who is straight from the Dominican Republic, Wei Hao. Today we're going to be covering the Chinese diaspora to places like Puerto Rico, Cuba, Dominican Republic, and all other Latin speaking countries in that region. And you know we couldn't do a Chino Latino video without an authentic Chinese person who grew up in the Dominican Republic. We got Wei Hao. Hey, get look at me hand. My name is Wei Hao Chen. I'm from the Dominican Republic. I moved here to New York five years ago. All right, so we're in East Williamsburg right now. This street is primarily Puerto Rican, but you know, all types of Latin Spanish people. We're in front of Caridad China. What does it mean? Oh, Caridad China means charity, so the food here is super low price. Hey, you guys, the diaspora led to a lot of different things, but one of the most notable is the fusion cuisines that emerged from it. Let's check it out. All right, you guys, we are at Caridad de China. Uh, we're about to order right now. Look, they have everything from dim sum to mofongo. They have roast pork, they have fried pork chops. Guys, this is very much a 50-50 menu right now. What should we get? Let's get this the mofongo, uh, a A4. El A4, that is like, uh-huh. Fried green plantain, vinaigrette, or shrimp chicken. Si. Si, All right, guys, we're about to step into the kitchen of Caridad China restaurant. Let's go. Hey, everybody, thanks for clicking on that video. And as you can tell, we love eating food, but if you eat this much food, you should probably work out a little bit. And for me, I've been working out more, but I don't always know where to start or how to track my progress. And that is why today's sponsor comes into play. I'm talking about FitBot. It's a workout app on iOS and Android that helps design custom workouts for you based on your goals and available equipment. Once you start a fitness program, it'll adjust the intensity to progress your workout so that you can reach your goal. You don't even have to think about adding weights because they'll tell you. So trust me, I've been working out more. If you follow my IG, you would have seen it, but you cannot just do like a few pushups here and there scattered across the week. FitBod makes it super easy to follow. Here's a full body workout that I selected with no weights. While no fitness program is one size fits all and every body is different they do have special algorithms that design every workout to be better than the last one without overworking your muscles they're all about progression and getting you better so really how much more can you ask from an app it's easy to use notifies you of new workouts helps customize things for you it even has videos to demonstrate how to do exercises properly I always tell my friends that the best workout is the one you're gonna keep up pick up the pace on your fitness journey with FitBod today and your future self will thank you get 25% off your membership just go to fitbod.me E slash fun grows or click in the description that is 25% off at fitbod.me slash fun grows there you go All right, you guys, we are sitting in front of a gigantic feast here at Calidad China. We had plantain, platano, I think it's from the yard, Dominican Republic. All right, this is chicken chicharrones with tostones, AKA more of the toasted green plantains, right? Green plantain, yeah. Okay, here I had to order the siulong bao, AKA the shaolong bao soup dumplings, just because there's really nothing Dominican about this, but this is just crazy to see on this spread right here. Man, you know I'm at a Chino Latino spot because I got fried rice, pink sauce and chashu. One, all right, wait, how, what are you going for first? I just had a piece of the pollo, I had to. That was really good. Yo, I haven't had like fried plantain for a long Yo, time. Yo, get it, man. Bro, are you, are you, are you this eating is, it? like my first time, like since, since five years ago. I haven't been to the art since, since two years ago. Yeah. So you guys, wow. we gotta get into each dish. I think for me, I'm curious about the chashu. I'm curious about the shaolong baos. Puerto, Puerto Rican shaolong bao. Yo. Really good. Yo, this is so super good. Yo. You need to try with this. Yo, he's eating the Shaolong Bao with the Puerto Rican red sauce. All right, guys, I gotta try the chashu with Maduro's. Look at these big slices right here. I'm about to eat them both at the same time. Chashu, chashu Maduro's. 
Mmm. Hey, you know me, I'm the mixologist. I'm about to get the tomato on top of the Medoros, on top of the chashu, on top of the tostones. This is a sandwich right here. ¿Cuál es su comida favorita de este restaurante latino asiático? Uh, lo más favorito es el arroz frito con chuleta, su maduro. What do you think it's gonna taste like? Is it, you think it's gonna taste like some good Chinese food, like the Latin food, or what do you expect? I think it's gonna have a lot of like different like taste buds. So I'm like, I don't know, I'm interested. Yeah, it's gonna be really good. Sounds you. Well, you well. All right, you guys, what are we looking at right now, Wei Hao? This is like a Maduro cup with like some sort of shrimp. I'm a mofongo, yeah, mofongo with shrimp, yeah. So this is a mofongo and shrimp. Guys, I saw him make this back there. The process was he cut up the plantains, he fried them part way, he mashed it up in a mortar and pestle, and then he shaped it into these bowls, and then he fried it again. So guys, this took a lot of work. This is one of their premier dishes here. Chino Latino, Latino, Latino Fusion. Mm. Guys, I'm gonna be trying the lo mein which has a mixture of different meats. I am looking at the mofongo with General So. Puerto, Puerto Rican Rico General So. All right, I'm gonna try the uh, lo mein while you guys do that. Mm. All right, Wei Hao, I am holding one of the most popular dishes here at Calidad. Which one is it? Pepper Stay is like, the most famous dish in Puerto Rico like for the French Chinese restaurant. All right, so this is pepper steak. You have pork, shrimp, fried rice. This is the house special fried rice. Black, Black pepper, pepper steak. steak. Black pepper steak. I have this uh, Dominican friend named Ahenis, man, and he's like, blood wise is more Dominican, but you talk just like him, bro. <laughs> hey, yo, Aheni. Hey, yo, I'm at Caridad uh, China, a Dominican Chinese spot with a Dominican Chinese guy. Can you talk to him real quick? Hello, mi hermano. Hello, que está motivo. So now I'm calling our Dominican American friend Marco. Yo, Marco. Hey, hey, I want to introduce you to this uh, Chinese Dominican guy we know, Wei Hao. All right, say what's up. It's not weird to see him speaking Spanish. No, I'm surprised because he's actually talking very well. With Janice, she is Dominican, she speaks Spanish. Which kind of food do you prefer, the Dominican Chinese or the Puerto Rican Chinese? <laughs> All right, you guys, that just wraps up the first leg. Wei Hao, thank you for joining us. Hey, thank, thank you for having me. Honestly, it Gracias. was amazing to see you communicate with so many people from Puerto Rico, from Dominican Republic, other Latin speaking countries. Um, I think that, you know, you just don't expect it. And I also think that the cool thing is about fusion spots like this is that it really is kind of bridging cultures. I know that's gonna sound a little like cheesy, maybe a little OD here, but as you can see, all the people in there are very, very friendly, you know, cause they're coming into a spot that they know is owned by Asians. So maybe they're also more open to Asians. Wait, how would you learn? The plantain's good, bro. <laughs> but you guys, we are headed on to our next Chino Latino spot. Thanks, Thanks for having me. All right, you guys, continuing on our Chino Latino crawl. Andrew, we're in front of New Apollo. I heard this is a community institution here on Grand Street, not Manhattan Grand Street. They had a location on Delancey, but this is New Apollo because they closed the one down on Delancey. And interestingly enough, Andrew, the owner, Chinese from Venezuela. All right, what's going on? I'm here with Joe. Yo, Joe, can you I ask you a question about like uh, this Venezuelan, you know, Dominican Chinese food? Like, what do you think about the fusion? It's awesome. I love when the food. When you go in there, is it weird to see Chinese people speaking Spanish? It used to be when I was a kid, but I grew up, I'm from Spanish Harlem, so I grew up going to Preciosa. They've been there ever since I was, that's a staple in the neighborhood. So I'm, I kind of got used to seeing them, you know, speaking Spanish to my mom and things of that nature. So now it's not, now at 40 some years old, it's not weird at all. All right, so we're here inside of New Apollo. Man, this guy's gonna help us order. Okay, uh, what what is the best dishes? Uh, chuleta and vite. Uno chuleta, for sure we're getting the chuleta. Yeah, camalo and chilala. Camalo and chilala. Okay, you really go long. Why are so many of the Chinese that immigrated to Latin American countries from Amping? Amping. Yeah, uh, uh, Solomon did a soup, papa. You got aquí y después que lo manda su tío so o su familia. Uh, familia, familia, yeah, familia. Yeah, chanchik. Yeah, chanchik, pang yao. Right, and it just yeah. keeps going. Yeah, yeah, got that, yeah. You guys, we are looking at the camarones. This is almost like uh, camarones cantonese. No, 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 this is camarones 
Diablo. This is the devil shrimp. Devil sauce. Here I got nicely fried Maduros here. You guys know the right plantains. And then here we have the pork fried rice. Very dark. I think it's kind of yellowish, kind of brown. Andrew, we have to check out the chuletas. These uh, pork chops. Um, cooked a little bit more Spanish style, but I want to say definitely some Chinese influence, uh, if nominal. Um, I would say the pork fried rice looks a lot darker than it did at Caridad China. Mm. Shrimp Camarones Diablo. Canto style. But cooked in a wok. This was cooked in a wok. Mm. Chuleta, aka Chupai. Okay, I heard that you guys are very famous for your betao, vinegar, cocktail. So, so what about uh, 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 Pulo Hawaii and suicide colada, make Hennessy colada. Oh, Hennessy colada for the hood. Yeah, for the yeah. hood. Mm, All right, yeah. definitely one blue Hawaiian. Okay, yeah, and Pulo then, Hawaii for lady. Okay, yeah, okay. Hennessy colada for the man. Okay, oh. leader, go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you did pick up some of that Spanish yeah. joke. <laughs> hey, 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 I got dibs on the Henny colada, David. You can get the yeah. blue Hawaiian. <laughs> All right, they are famous, Andrew, in the streets of Brooklyn for their drinks. They yes. said that a quarter of this will put you out. That's what someone asked us. All right, so here we have a Henny Colada. We have a Blue Hawaiian. We have a Suicide by name only. I have to assume that I cannot drink very much of that, so I might just take a sip. David, here at New Apollo, you sick, yeah, and then you get lit, yeah. <laughs> right? And right? Woo! Yo, strong. The drinks is ho sale. Be honest, you didn't know this many Chinese people spoke Spanish in America. And by the way, the flavors of Cuban, Dominican, Puerto Rican food, they blend very well with Southern Chinese. I mean, it's all savory, a little sweet, saucy, lots of rice, and almost all of it's cooked in a wok. But before we head up and try what many consider the best Chino Latino restaurant in all of New York, we had some questions. Why did some Chinese move to places like Cuba before America? And what was it like growing up as a Chinese kid out there? We're gonna get some of our answers from Chinese Dominican New Yorker Tommy at Aura Latino Jewelry on Bowery in Chinatown, New York. And you know that we could not do a Chino Latino food cultural exploration without an authentic Chino Latino friend. You already Yo, know, you already know. Tommy Jewels, man. We're so here what up, at what up, what up? Uh, Oro Latino Jewelry, right? What, what does that mean? Oro, gold. Latino, because I come from Latin America. I was born in DR, and uh, my father was in the jewelry business, and that's pretty much a family business. I got sucked in here, and here I am. All right, so everybody here at Oro, you know, Latino Jewelry is Chino Latino. Soy de Venezuela. Nombre. Mi nombre es Alicia. <laughs> Hi, I'm Janet. I'm from Panama. Hola, mi nombre es Janet. Soy de Panama. Búscame esa cadena. La blockchain. La segunda. La blockchain que está ahí. Got you, I got you, yeah. Yeah. Link me on. Oh, you're not the one with the This is the type of chain that we got here. Digo rope chain. Digo rope chain. Sounds up tune. Subs AK. Talking about, you know, like the Chinese diaspora, the Cantonese diaspora, they went everywhere. Oh, you know, at the time it was easier to go to Latin America than come to the US. So that's pretty much where my dad went to DR, my grandfather went to DR, then my dad went to DR, then I was born in DR, then I landed in and then came to the US. But you were saying uh, it actually all started with Cuba originally, right? Well, Cuba was the first uh, uh, Chinatown. Cuba was the, the biggest Chinatown. All the Chinese was in Cuba. You know, with the relationship with China had with Cuba, all the Chinese was in Cuba. It was easier to get to Cuba. Than, than, than to go anywhere else. And then from there, it's pretty much expanded out right. to everywhere else. Because uh, Fidel, Fidel, Fidel and, 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 and Mao was homies. Yeah, yeah, they were homies. <laughs> they were homies. They were tight. Yeah, they were homies. Yeah, that's true. That's true. If you're going to Florida Maya, you should get the uh, fried rice squid, the uh, squid ink, and then uh, the baked chicken, the sachi papa is also good. Obviously, you know, typical food. Uh, the croquettes, you can try that too. And uh, pretty much uh, that's that's already, and they got the smaller portions too, instead of the, the family size portion too. So it's good too for, for you know, be one person. Florida Mile has been around for 47 years and sets the bar for the overall cuisine. Over the years though, they've added a lot more Peruvian dishes, which in itself is kind of an Asian South American fusion. So the Upper West Side was once home to several Chino Latino restaurants, but now there's only a few left. But let's eat and talk to some second generation owners to find out what the future of the cuisine might be. How you doing? My name is Dennis Chu. Uh, I am the son of the owner of Florida Mile Restaurant. We have two locations, one on Broadway and one on Amsterdam. The restaurant has been open for about 46, 47 years now. 
And the uh, restaurant was opened by my father, uh, his name is Philip Chu, and my grand uncle, his name is William Cho. Uh, they opened up both restaurants together. And we specialize in Chino and Latino dishes. Uh, now more Peruvian also than, uh, than other than uh, Chinese and uh, other Latin uh, dishes that we have. The squid. The squid. Squid and fried rice, Chinese style. Yeah, can I do that? Okay. Yo vine de Hong Kong. Yo hablo en español. Okay? Wow, so, so, I like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I do the plant thing with the chicken and the lomo. Yeah. Or yeah. yuca, right. whatever right. you want, they come included. Yeah. yeah, I guess, what do you think is more? Uh, uh, the, the yuca for the lomo yeah. and have chicken with the sweet plant yep. thing. All right, you guys, we're at Flor de Mayo. It originally started out as Chinese Cuban. Since then, they did add a Peruvian element. But right, you guys, we are looking at a Peruvian Chinese influenced soup. Now, um, I know Camarones is in the name, you know, DC said it better than I did, but let me tell you this, this soup is incredible. You guys, we are looking at a black squid ink Chinese Peruvian fried rice. You've got the blackened ham, you've got shrimp, the camarones, squids, camares, I believe, and just, I've never seen a dish look like this ever before. I've had like forbidden treasure black Chinese rice, but this is taking it up to the next level with the black squid ink. Maybe some Japanese influence as well. That's good! This is good! That is... Mm. Got him. David, you were talking crazy about the black squid ink fried rice. And you know me, I love some fried rice. Mm. This dish alone is why people come to Florida Mayo, man. This is the dish that you have to get here. Lomo Sotado, I actually saw him make this fresh. He took the beef strips. He had a little bit of sauce that definitely has some soy sauce mixed into it. They freshly fried the fries. You know, the fries are not too thick. All right, guys, let's try their Lomo Sotado. It's definitely a lot saucier and a little bit more brown than other ones that I've had, but steak looks good. Almost cooked it like a chow mein. Mmm. So this actually reminds me of this pork and potato dish that my mom used to make, David. If you remember, mom used to make this pork and potato stir fry, and she would cut it off up like this. It has a little bit of sourness. It's a little bit like vinegar. This actually kind of tastes like a, this is gonna be crazy to say in this video, but a Northeastern Chinese dish, a dongbei dish, because it has a little bit of that vinegar vibe. Oh, la brasa. There's nothing really Asian about this except the way they cut it, but- The way they cut it makes it look a lot like Tati Kai. I don't know, guys, I'm smelling it. I feel like that's a little bit of five spice right there. Can you see that, David? That looks like a little five spice residue. Mm. Bro, I think Peruvian roast chicken might be the best in the world. Got the pork chops with garlic. It does really look like Peter Luger's. Um, and I think the little extra Asian flair is a lot of the fried chopped garlic. And that's what actually I've seen a lot, even at Caridad China, that's what they did a lot to really uh, separate themselves. So it's very juicy. They cut it up Chinese style. Mmm. This is the boiled garlic pork chop. I've got to tell you, Andrew, that is if our Cantonese father was to ask to make a pork chop. All right, here I have the Maduros and the yuca, and this has a little garlic sauce on top, so let me see how, if this is like garlic oil or pickled garlic. That's chopped garlic oil, baby. Mmm, check it out with the Maduros. The ripe ones cooked to perfection. This would not be a Chino Latino video without a nutcracker. This is a famous drink in New York City. Um, a lot of rappers have talked about it. Uh, Loaded Lux made a whole song about it. He's a battle rapper. And uh, you know, even David, our server, had to tell us, yo, it's strong. He's like, it's strong, it's strong. Are you sure? I said, yeah. Straight to the dome. Woo! Hey guys, I can't finish it all. I got a scooter back, but this nutcracker is hitting. I don't know what's going on, but here on the Upper West Side, there are so many Chinese Latin spots. We are in front of La Dinistia. I believe that means the dynasty, obviously referring to Chinese uh, dynastic past. Let's check it out. I heard this has been around for like 40, 50 years. We're here with Rich at La Dinastia. You know, what are we gonna get today? 
guys are gonna get our signature dish, our chicharron de pollo sin hueso with the house special fried rice. And you're also gonna get the ropa vieja with the rice and beans. Oh, super good food. Guys, we are looking at the top two dishes here at La Dinastia, which means the dynasty. This is a ropa vieja. This is a very, very Cuban dish. I almost want to say only Cubans eat ropa vieja. It's like a shredded beef dish. So I'm going to pour some of this onto the white rice. Yo, this is Andrew. This is kind of fascinating to be in a Chinese Cuban spot right now, run by Chinese Peruvians. Okay, okay, okay. We got the ropa vies. We got the white rice. We have the black beans, the frijoles, the negro. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit of everything all together. Mmm. Andrew, chicharrones de pollo. This is probably the most popular thing I see people order at Chino Latino. Like literally, Andrew, this plate right here with the house special fried rice and the pollo, the chicharrones. That's the number one thing I've seen. All right, you guys. I'm going in, guys. This is the uh, chicharron de pollo. I'm not saying you can call that a chicken tender, but if you could, that's the best damn chicken tender I ever had. Yeah, if you was to switch like up to chino switch latino. Up, like, well, well, like, like the new chino latino. The new chino latino? I'm trying to keep heritage, you know, so I would like to keep it like OG. My father opened up this restaurant like about 35 years ago, back in 86. Uh, back then, you know, the Upper West Side was flooded with Chino Latino restaurants. I'm talking about like almost one in every corner on Broadway. Like it was more common than an American Chinese spot. Like a Chino Latino spot Definitely. was more common than a- Especially up here in the Upper West Side. So like um, now they're all, they're all almost gone. We're one of the like the last remaining few. What made you want to like keep it going versus like you could just been a real estate agent, an accountant, a lawyer, right. or whatever. Yeah. Did it for, for, for my family. You know, just trying to provide a food on the table at home. All right, finally, we had to end it off at a very, very nice and well-decorated modern restaurant, guys. We're here at Cayo Dao, okay, which is a little bit different than the other Cuban Chinese spots that we've been to because this is a chain. It's owned uh, ultimately by a Italian musician that lived in Cuba and visited Knife Street, which is where the Barrio Chino, AKA the Chinatown was in Cuba. Guys, I want to start off with the first dish. This. I mean, it doesn't look like much. This looks like Maduro's and sauce, but this is the Mapo Maduro's, AKA your sweet fried plantains with Mapo sauce in it. Yes, the spicy pork. So the plantains are gonna take the place of the tofu. Let me try it. Uh, it kind of tastes like how you'd expect. It's a sweeter version of Mapo tofu. The ravioli one tons here. So it's like a mixture. This might come from, you know, the mind of the Italian owner here. But look, you got a little bit of chili oils. You have your chopped scallions, of course. Let's see what's inside. Mmm. I think this is a fish dumpling. And this actually tastes pretty Chinese. I would say this right here probably tastes about 70% Chinese and 30% fusion. Mmm. All right, last but not least, I got the Cuban egg rolls. These are made to kind of taste like a Cubano. So as you can see, it's got this nice line of mustard and the mustard is strong, I can tell you that because mustard is a big part of a Cubano. So I'm gonna go eat it. That really does taste like a Cubano. I would say form factor, obviously it's the egg roll, but everything else is Cuban after that. Pretty cool though. Reason why we're ending off here at Cayo Dao is because Cuba actually was the nexus. That's actually where a lot of Chinese immigrants started at. And then they went to other Caribbean places after that. So even in the mid 1800s, a lot of Chinese went to Cuba. And then in the 1950s, more Chinese came. And from there, a lot of them went to, you know, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Cuban Chinese, Chino Latino, this is it. All right, you guys, we had to talk to Queens native Jay Shells, Colombians, about, about the Chino Latino food. What do you know? Because you grew up with it, right? Yeah, yeah, Junction, once again, Queens always has the best freaking food. Uh, one of my favorite plates is the chuletas with pork fried rice, no vegetables. I get fries and I get maduro. You cannot get their homemade iced tea. What's your order if you go? Um, I love the chicharrones de pollo with the fried rice, the maduros, and like you said, the homemade iced tea is delicious. You cannot get it. Yeah. Doesn't matter what you do. Even if you just walk by and just get a homemade iced tea, it's worth it. 
I think as Chinese Americans, we tend to forget that Chinese people moved everywhere in the world and a lot of them actually moved then to America. That's why sometimes I feel like you can't even say Chinese Americans are a monolith, let alone Asians as a general group. But it is refreshing to meet a Chinese person with some Latin flair to them. It's an experience that is ongoing because Asians continue to immigrate to South America and the Caribbean. Listen, the food is delicious and the history is interesting. So shout out to Chino Latinos. And if you have any comments or if you want to rep where you're from, let us know in the comments down below because we just love New York City and what a diverse mosaic of people it really is.